Hello friends, I would like to introduce you to SV Tritea's new all electric galley. This video is going to be two sections. The first section, I'm going to talk about what made me decide to go all electric for the cooking here on Tritea. The second half of this video, I'm going to show you how I went about taking my gimbaled alcohol stove, taking it apart, and then putting it back together and mounting the uh, induction cooktop and the convection oven so that we now have the all electric galley. Okay, first things first. The whole reason I decided to convert to electric was when I got here to Hawaii and I decided that I was going to push on for the South Pacific, I had an alcohol set up on the boat using denatured alcohol. Now, through research online, I discovered that they don't even sell denatured alcohol in the South Pacific because people will sometimes use it for moonshine or just drink it outright, and that can lead to blindness. So, most places, maybe all places in the South Pacific, you cannot get denatured alcohol. So I knew I had to do one of two things. I either had to convert to electric or I had to convert to propane. Now I didn't want to go with propane because I didn't, I don't really have room for a proper protein, propane locker on the stern of Tritea. She's a small 30 foot boat. And I didn't want to have the hassle of trying to find fittings and getting fuel all over the world, which I've seen so many cruisers go through, this, this struggle to get propane in different ports. Not to mention, um, if I could avoid having an explosive gas on the boat, then I definitely wanted to eliminate that option as well. So the other option was electric. Now, I knew I couldn't go electric without having lithium batteries. The only way you can have an electric setup without lithium is if you have a major generator on board that you run every time you cook. Um, the, the These high demand electronic devices such as induction cooktops or even electric kettles, those things destroy AGM lead acid batteries. So you really have to have lithium to be able to do this conversion. And after I got a full sponsorship with Dakota Lithium, that was when it, the, the choice was clear that I was gonna go all electric. Okay, a little bit about my power system. I have 400 amp hours of Dakota lithium batteries, and I have 400 watts of Renogy solar panels. I have a number of videos showing me installing both the batteries and the solar panels, as well as going through my entire DC charging system, if you'd like to check that out. Now, the first time I'd heard about this even being an option was on SV Dallas's channel back when they converted to lithium and then installed all electric galley on their boat. I'd, I'd never even heard of this as, as a possibility. Um, so when I was looking into the possibility of doing it on Tritea, I went back to their channel and found the one year later video where they talk about their thoughts and feelings about the electric galley a year later. And they had nothing but positive things to say about it. And that was a big factor in me being like, okay, cool. Like these dudes are out there doing it. They spent a year with it and they're still stoked on it. So I was like that, that seems like a really good endorsement to me. Let's talk about the equipment a little bit. Now I had, as I mentioned, my original gimbaled galley stove that fits the housing. I made all this stuff custom to Tritea, but all of this um, was already made. So I had the option to be able to modify my alcohol stove and have it accept these appliances for the, um, the new electric galley. Um, there's another YouTube channel, SV Ramble On, and he did the same conversion to his galley where he's all electric now. And he custom built his own housing to hold all of his appliances. And I'll go ahead and put his link down in the description of this video so you can see how you can go about it if you don't already have a stove that you can take apart and, and reuse and upcycle. Um, so yeah, check out his video if you want to see if you're going from, from scratch and you don't already have this set up you can see how he went about it and go from there. Now, I was really surprised at how easy it was to unbolt my entire stove. There were no points on my stove that were riveted, so I didn't have to cut anything as far as disassembling it goes. Everything was really just bolted together, which was made like upcycling into this a lot easier than had I, you know, had to cut through a bunch of rivets and stuff. So I took it out took the whole thing apart, removed the stove insulation and all that interior and got rid of it and um, cleaned it up a bit. And then I cut out a big hole in the back. So there's plenty of airflow and I fabricated a new wood bottom and, and stuff like that. 
so that it added to the structure because since I had removed that that front glass door it had got real wiggly and taken away quite a bit of its like stability um, it has since really stabilized after I rebuilt it but um yeah so I stripped it down to the bare minimum and then put back together what I needed to put back together um, with the induction range I went with an Improva two burner uh, range top and it was uh, $200. I actually would have gone with a more expensive one, but this is the only one that fit perfectly inside my stovetop, so that's the one I went with. Uh, I, in the perfect world, I would have loved to have gone with a three burner, so I had the extra option. Uh, but again, space was an option uh, was an issue, so I went with the one that fit and worked for my purpose. So now if you don't know about how induction cooking works, it's totally bizarre. Um, I'll include a card at the top of this video with someone who knows what they're talking about explaining the actual mechanics of how it works. But basically it's like, I think magnets spin or it spins a magnetic force inside the cooktop, which actually heats the metal of the pan. So it's not like there's heat being applied to the metal and then the metal heats up. This is actually creating an effect that actually heats just the metal. Now, one of the great things about that is there's no energy wasted and the other thing is it doesn't heat up your environment. So in the tropics, that's a great thing because you're not heating up your cabin in a hot environment already. So that's a wonderful aspect of induction. And there's also just not a ton of like loss of energy while you're preparing food. Now, while we're on that subject, it's important to know that when you get an induction range, you have to get pots and pans that are compatible with an induction cooktop. And that means that they have to be magnetic. So for instance, I just got a new set. Um, my dear friend Sarah got them for me for my birthday. They're very beautiful. But the, the way you can test is you get some magnets and test your thing. It has to be able to stick to it. Now, if, you're, if your magnets don't stick to whatever pots and pans you already have, the, the uh, induction cooktop is not gonna work with it. So that's important to know. A lot of times people get it, they'll put their pot on, they're like, this thing doesn't work. I took it right out of the box. It's already broken. Uh, that's because whatever pot or pan they're using is likely not magnetic or, cap or uh, compatible with an induction range. Therefore, nothing happens because, you know, it just doesn't, do they don't work together. So that's an important factor to make sure you have the correct pots and pans when you get your induction from the get-go. Now for my oven option, I got this GE mechanical uh, convection oven air fryer um, combo. And um, I'm very excited about it. I spent a little bit more to get the analog, like mechanical knobs instead of a digital readout. I just like it better. Um, I paid $175 for this unit. And both of these units, you'll be able to find a link to what I used in the description of this video. Um, but my baby brother, Colby Thorpe, swears by his air fryer. So I'm excited to learn how to use that to my benefit and what I can prepare with it. And um, he loves his. So I'm stoked to have that option. I'm really stoked to be able to cook pizzas on board. That's gonna be an option and also baking scones and stuff. Uh, so I am really stoked about having a little oven. I've never had the, I, my oven didn't work on my last setup. So I'm stoked to be able to um, have that luxury as well. Now the heart of the whole galley setup is a 3000 watt Renogy inverter. Um, and it is dedicated just to be used with the galley. Uh, I have a separate 2000 watt inverter that all the house plugs are hooked up to, but I wanted to have this sort of backup system. So either one of my inverters was strong enough to power my cooktop uh, in case I have a failure of the uh, inverter. Now, since I've only just completed this project, I don't have all the data and numbers about the power consumption yet. I'm gonna be doing a follow-up video where I spend a whole week documenting the real-time power draw from the system as I cook dinners in the way I would normally cook dinners. And I'm gonna document and log all of that sort of power consumption. And then I'm also going to be documenting how quickly my batteries top up in the morning. Being here in the tropics where it's always sunny, they top up pretty quick. When I get into places such as like New Zealand or different places where there's like extended days of cloud cover, um, and storms and stuff, then I start have to, I'm going to have to be worried about, am I going to have power to cook? So what I've done is I've ordered a small gas powered portable generator that I'll use for that scenario. So if I have a week or two 
where the sun doesn't come out and my batteries are getting low, the benefit it, with lithium is the fact that you can bring it down so low and it doesn't damage the batteries, but you have full access to all of that power. But even still, you need to be able to power those back up if you're cooking every night with an electric galley. So I got a small gas power generator is my sort of number one backup. Um, that is a much better option than running your diesel engine. Uh, that is, it's not good to run a diesel engine at idle to charge your batteries. It, uh, you can burn out your alternator because you can overheat your alternator and carbon builds up on a diesel engine when it's not under load and running. So that's like a last resort scenario. So yeah, I got this little generator that that will be my sort of go to when there hasn't been sun for a number of days. Now, some other options I have for cooking, if all of my electronics fail, I have a jet boil with plenty of gas canisters. So that's my sort of easy go-to as far as cooking. Um, the other thing I have is a old barbecue grill that's rail mounted that uh, takes charcoal or wood. So I have various different options as backups in case I did have a failure to where I wasn't able to cook. Now, I believe it was on the Dallas video um, Brian from SV Dallas mentioned that uh, you can buy these little bitty induction single burners for pretty cheap on Amazon, and that would be a good backup that I could just plug in and cook in case the actual range itself failed. And not if I didn't lose all my power, but if just this top unit failed, that's an easy sort of backup. You can get those for like a hundred bucks, I think. So I've got lots of backups in place, and I'm really excited that my cooking fuel is now going to be in the form of renewable energy and excited to be able to even be more off-grid like eventually when i get a water maker which i don't have at the moment i'll be able to be so far off grid because like without ever having to worry about going in to get cooking fuel using solar and um if you could make your own water it really opens up where you can go and for how long you can go all right now i'll show you guys some of the details of the stove and how i went about putting it together all right first things first let's turn on the renergy inverter Here we go. I'm gonna show you. There's some gimbals. And you'll see at the end of this video, there is a, a weight on the bottom. I still need to tune it a little bit. You see how it's not quite sitting level. So you just move that weight forward and aft to tune where the, the oven sits. So I've left good little gaps on the sides here that allow for airflow. Here's the little oven. You can see there's a gap there as well so that there's plenty of airflow. And also you can see through these little holes and that gives really good airflow beneath the induction range. So here's our induction range. Kind of hard to see because it's so reflective. Let's see, there's the Havre, and I don't know anything about this brand. That's just what I bought on Amazon. So here's our induction range. Kind of hard to see because it's so reflective, but there's a little power touch button there. See a red light flashing. We'll put our pot on here. And I still need to get the silicone mats that go underneath to protect it. It'll keep it from sliding around like crazy too. Um, and the cool thing about the silicone mats on these things is that you... Um, that you can cook through the silicone, which is so bizarre. But that'll really help in a seaway. The other thing is I have these old, these old like pot holders, but they don't quite reach. So I'm either gonna have to uh, have new ones fabricated or, or figure something out. But that's what I'm working with at the moment. So yeah, so we got our power here. Now, a lot of this sort of stuff I will show you in the follow-up video where we talk about the power consumption. Um, you can hear this sort of insect sound and that's the magnetics doing their magic. And um, then you can hear the fan going beneath it trying to, to dissipate that heat that's generated below. Okay, now it's been just a few minutes. She's getting ready to boil. Now, still i put my hand here there's like no heat my phone gets hotter charging than what i'm feeling right now it is so crazy yet here we go the water is starting to boil 
and again this b water boiled in a couple of minutes um, pretty fantastic and everything I've read about induction is you have to learn how to use it because it cooks so fast that you want to cook on lower temperature settings so that you don't burn things but um really neat option and uh, I am very excited to have an all-electric galley on Tritea. All right, now it's time to get into how I actually went about taking apart my old stove and turning it into this futuristic galley. It's time to get into a big project of converting the galley from denatured alcohol stove in this like Frankenstein old gimbaled oven to um, all electric. Uh, we're gonna be taking apart a lot of this oven and seeing if we can mount a convection oven inside and then I'll be installing a induction cooktop up top. But um, the first process, the first thing we gotta do is see what happens when we take this thing apart. So let's get into it. Pretty nicely, actually. Um, they made it so you could seems like you could disassemble the whole thing without much problems. And this is an old, used Frankenstein stove I bought years ago. But I'm gonna throw some of the pieces back together and kind of see how she she stands, and then we'll bring our convection oven out, set her in place, and see what's gonna require to get that thing mounted in place and whatnot. We've got got it upside down right now because I'm figuring out how to mount the convection oven into the old gimbaled stove housing and this is what it looks like and I want to show you guys if you've never used um, what's called rivet nuts um, that's what I'm using to secure this down and um, I'll show you guys how they work they're pretty cool and they're gonna work great for this application they work great for a lot of applications um, so this is a rivet nut And um, let me clamp you guys on and show you what's up. So this is the rivet nut itself. And this is how you set it. Basically, this the nut screws on to the little rivet setter like that. And when you squeeze these together, it compresses this and then gives you a threaded stainless nut inside whatever you're trying to use. And um, I'll show you how I'm using it, what kind of application we're using today. So I've already done one to make sure it's going to work, um, and then I'll show you guys how I'm doing the second one. And um, here's the rivet nut installed on the bottom of the convection oven. And you see I have like a, I think these are quarter twenty, um, and then it just threads right in there, and that's going to secure this down to our new bottom that we're making. So now we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to drill a hole here, and then insert the rivet nut. Put it in the hole there. Turn this and it screw it down till it's totally flush with the top of the rivet nut. And then you just squeeze it together. And you don't want to squeeze it more than once because what it'll do is it'll jog those threads down and it can mar the threads inside. And then once it's done, that and then that screws in place like that 
and that's it. Now we have a way to secure this down with a nice sturdy fastener. Welcome to the future. So I've been working for the last week just on the, the galley setup. We've got all the electrical installed, the inverter, everything's run. And I just finished all the modifications and all the finish work on the stove conversion. So I want to go ahead and show you what it looks like before I put the appliances in. Um, I have all the teak trim that fills out the uh, voids. And um, yeah, we'll do a little walk around of what she looks like right now. And then I'll throw the appliances in and I'll show you what that's all about as well. I like that old look. So I used a lot of old teak that I've uh, had on the boat for a long time. They came off of a boat from Los Angeles that was getting cut up, 100 year old boat. So this, all this is old teak, very beautiful. Nice trim work everywhere. I cleaned up the stainless the best I could. I fabricated some risers for my convection over to sit on. And you can see the holes where it bolts through. Here's the top where the range is gonna go. I've got ventilation holes cut, and then a, a hole for the cord to pass through. There will be chafe protection on the cable to make sure that that, that sharp edge doesn't cut it. Here's what the back looks like. I got a giant hole cut out for plenty of ventilation, uh, lots of airflow. I've got the power strip installed, and um, that adds, gives me an extra little surge protector, which is nice. And then you'll see when we go to install it where the power from the uh, galley comes up and feeds into this. All right, we'll flip it over. And I have a three pound scuba weight, like a like scuba diving weight to offset to try to get the balance. Right now I have it, I kind of guessed where it is. And um, once we get all the appliances in and get everything set, we'll see, you know, I can tune this in any direction I need to, to sort of keep that balance level. Very happy with how this came out. Um, let's get the appliances installed and see what it looks like totally finished. There she is. Everything's installed. Got the convection oven, air fryer installed. Got my range installed. And uh, I'll walk you guys around and show you what it all looks like. <laughs> Let's take a look at how I did the power supply and the electrical for the new electric galley stove. This is my original stove enclosure that I made, I think back in 2019, but I'm not quite sure. And what I've done is I've run electrical from the dedicated Renogy 3000 watt inverter, which is mounted under the chart table. Cable comes through. I've used this cable gland uh, that you'd normally use on a deck. It's waterproof and everything. Um, I have chafe protection in the form of a cut uh, like hose that I've put over the, the uh, cable itself and then I've installed my plug. Now I made this line or this uh, cable really long so that I, I have plenty of room to pull it out so I can safely when I'm taking the stove out I can safely plug it in unplug it and um, the other thing that allows is so that as the stove gimbals it has plenty of room to travel. Um, I have taken it up the uh, the back end there so that there's no there's not going to be any kind of bending at the point where it comes in the cable gland and um, just kind of leave everything loose. Now this being loose and just kind of going back and forth is not any different than the way the propane hose is set up. So propane stoves have like enough propane hose to allow for the gimbaled action and the travel. So that's how I went about running the power to the back of the unit. Uh, let's go ahead and put the stove back into place.
enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching, fair winds until next time.